Hi everybody, Fide Master Dennis Montecruz is here for ChessLecture.com and today we're going to take a look at a bit of lighter entertainment but it's nice to see games like this every once in a while both from the standpoint of keeping things a bit light and breezy and also because of what happened in this game. So this is a game where the amateur beat the grandmaster and not only beat him but really beat him very badly. So it's worth, worth bearing in mind both from the standpoint of us as amateurs looking to have hope when we play these, these uh, really higher rated players, these, these stars of the game, that good things can happen to us, that we can, we can win these games. And of course, it's also a salutary warning for us when we're the higher rated player, that if you violate the rules of the game, not of course the laws of chess, but you know the rules of thumb, I mean, there are exceptions to all of these, but when you take too many liberties, you can be punished. And it doesn't matter how great a player you are, how much higher rated you are than your opponent. If you take too many chances, take too many liberties, punishment is very likely coming your way. And again, every once in a while we need to be reminded of this. If we can be reminded by seeing someone else suffer and pay the price, that's usually a better thing. So let's take a look. This game was played in May of 2015. White is a grandmaster named Zoltan Varga. So he's the, uh, he's the unfortunate victim in the story. Black is a Hungarian player named Daniel Grimm. Might be an FM. I'm not even sure if he has that title or not. So white outrated black by more than 200 points. So not a colossal rating mismatch, but certainly a significant one. And when you add to it that, white, uh, that the grandmaster had the white pieces, everything is set up for another traditional master versus amateur, or let's say grandmaster versus weak master um, beating. Well, that is what happens, but... The, uh, the players get the rules reversed. All right. Varga has white and plays e4. Grimm plays d5. And here, white decides to avoid theory, or at least hopes to sidestep it with knight to c3. I should point out that this, of course, can arise through the opposite move order. And the reason why I want to point this out is because knight to c3 can be tricky. If black plays e5, Let's say you're, you're a 1e5 player. You might want to do this. But the problem with this is that after knight f3, knight c6, d4, it's kind of easy to get into trouble here. So after takes, takes, like if you play knight to f6, then bishop to g5, and I think here already black has to be kind of accurate. I think bishop to b4, if I'm remembering correctly, is the only good move against this. Like if you play bishop to e7, then knight f5, let's say castles, takes, and you can see you're already getting into all kinds of horrible trouble here. So things like this make this at least a little bit tricky. Play e5 if you want, but, but do a little prep on that beforehand. I think d5 is, in fact, the, the simplest and soundest way to meet this. And why could either play d4 going into a Verisov, which is playable, but certainly nothing black should worry about, or e4, which transposes into... Uh, an inferior line of the Scandinavian. So here we are. And, okay, I think black has a very nice uh, selection of moves here. In fact, you can play practically anything. So you can play c6, inviting transposition to a Karakhan, so d4, and there you are in the classical. You can play e6, and after d4, you're in a mainstream French. You could play knight to f6, and this will transpose most likely into, a, or it is, a, a good line of the, the Oyekin's defense for black. I mean, black has no problems here at all. And there are still two other good moves. So you could play d takes e4. This I like if you're a center counter or Scandinavian player and you want to punish white for trying to avoid the main line. So this is kind of a psychologically amusing way to go. Here, white has nothing better than knight to c3, and so you, you've tricked him into getting the opening you want anyway. So why can't even skirt um, the Scandinavian by playing knight to c3 if, if black is uh, in inclined to insist? But the best move, I think, is d4, and that is what Grimm played in this game. And I, I like this for two reasons. One is, of course, that it is best, but secondly, it's also that he wasn't intimidated. So he could have said, you know what, um, I know my, my regular Scandinavian, I'll play d takes e4, and just go down that path. But no, he says, okay, if the Grandmaster is going to play this junk against me, I'm going to punish him for playing junk. And so d4, I think, is psychologically the, uh, the correct way to go in such a situation. 
Assuming, of course, that you know you know it and you, you like the positions you get. All right, Varga played knight c to e2. White or black just takes the center. And, okay, white plays knight to g3 now. And it could transpose. So normally this comes up like this. Knight f3, f6, knight g3, and then bishop to e6. Important move, keeping white from grabbing this diagonal. So this pawn chain is very secure. The drawback, potentially, is that white grabs this diagonal, so black is preventing him from doing so. All right, but let's get back to the move order in the game. Same points. And now, uh, white played c3. Bishop to b5 check is, I think, more common. The idea is to swing the bishop around to here to exchange off this bishop, which will otherwise be a bad bishop. I mean, if white plays d3 here, then clearly this guy has no future. So bishop to b5 c6, bishop a4, and he's going to trade that and hope that maybe he can use the f5 score someday. I mean, it's not really likely to happen. Anyway, from here, black has numerous good options. h5 is one, putting pressure on this already rather unhappy knight on g3. Another simple good move is knight to d7, threatening knight c5. And after bishop b3, to go take, take, and d3. And after, let's say, c3, then play h5, and black stands better here, thanks in large part to this rather bad bishop on c1. It's not necessarily bad forever. I mean, maybe you can launch it into the game with all of those pawn moves. Maybe. But that's going to take a lot of tempi. It's not clear that it'll succeed. And, um, and until it does, that bishop is just awful. Assuming, of course, that white can't win the d-pawn, which should not be the case. All right. So that is what can happen in case of bishop to b5 check, which I think is generally considered the main approach. In the game, Varga played c3, and black, of course, plays d3, locking in both bishops. And again, you know, he's just playing very straightforwardly. He's not, not afraid. He's not saying, you know what, I'm kind of nervous. I mean, this guy's a grandmaster. If I play d3, maybe I'm, I'm going too far. Nope. He just realizes this is a good move, and I'm going to do it. And he punishes white consistently in the game. All right, so here uh, white played b3. If instead knight to h4, then it's a possible continuation like this. So c5, check, knight c6, and queen to b5. And this is kind of interesting. So white is aiming to recoup this pawn, or not to recoup it, but to, to eliminate it, and thereby untangle this uh, mess on the queen side and, and get both bishops into the game. So, of course, black should play c4 here, queen b7, 